Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. I'm your host, Danita Young, and today I have a very special guest that's going to be teaching us about your worth is not what you weigh. I'm really excited to bring in Whitney Chaney. She lives in Southern Idaho with her husband and her three rambunctious children. She's got a bachelor's degree in communications and a master's degree in healthcare administration. She's a co-owner in the Chaney Flooring and Home Design. This is the Idaho's premier design center. She's also a coach and a co-owner of the Top Flight Tumbling. Whitney is also an author of the children's book, My Tutu and Me, which is available on Amazon and other major online retailers. She loves booty bands and she hopes all women can enjoy the benefits of becoming a member of such an awesome company so welcome in whitney booty bands and barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching we're talking about how you're not letting the scale affect you anymore or you're not freaking out with the scale so definitely so i've been thinking about this because we kind of talked about maybe what we would talk about And I thought back to when I was in college and I was doing a lot of um, like rodeo queen beauty beauty pageants. And my brother was always my speech. I don't know. He'd always help me with speaking. speaking. And he would sit down and he told me, um, he drew the circle and then some lines through it and every piece of the pie or whatever needed to be balanced, he said. He's like, for your life to be balanced, you've got to fill each one of these areas and you can't let one of them be neglected. And one of them was like um, emotional well-being, physical well-being, and, you know, maybe spiritual well-being, well-being. And I've thought a lot about that lately when we've talked about mindset, going back to what you talked to me in college about. And I think it's really important to make sure that each of those are, are balanced equally, because if they're not, then your life kind of spirals out of control. I like your analogy of that. I had a, I have a girlfriend named Cindy and she, she did the same thing. And it was like the wheel of life. It was like a balance of a wheel yeah. and it, it, and it had these different components. I like the three that kind of makes it really simple. Was it just three that he's had? Yeah. Yeah. I think hers, uh, I'll have to try to locate it. It, it might've had anywhere from like six to eight or something like that. And what it was interesting is you actually colored in like how much, like you kind of like rated yourself on like a one to 10, I think on each one of those and you colored it in and you got to see your wheel. And she was like, is your wheel fully like a will that it actually can rotate through life and get you through the next destination? Right. Or is it yeah. super lopsided and flat in some of those areas? And are you like hit in some flat spot, flat spots? Yeah. So, um, he was like, you know, if you just sit around and study all day that your education part is going to be filled. But he's like, then you're not getting any any physical exercise and you're going to get fat, you know. So he just broke it down really simple. Like you've got to be doing something in each of these to be balanced. And it's very true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. So I want to I'm going to dive in because I think I think one of the biggest things that I really hear about women is that emotional stuckness to the scale. And I want to kind of, I want to maybe even backtrack, like, where do we think this even came from? Or like, if you can go back to as far in your life that you recall that scale connection that you had, and then how long that connection to the scale actually lasted in your life for? I don't know. I, I remember being little, like stuck to this scale, even I shouldn't even have been worried about weight. You know what I mean? Um, but I grew up in like the dance, you know, we did a lot of dancing and stuff in my family and gymnastics and stuff. And in the back of my mind, that was always in there. How much do I weigh? How do I look in this leotard compared to everybody else or whatever? Um, So I think for me, it's been a long time. And then I think over the years, you kind of attach this, like, I don't know how to explain it. Your worth is attached to how much you weigh. And that can really screw you up, you know, like, oh, I, I, I don't want to be in this family picture. or I don't want to go out with friends or I don't want to do this or that because I'm X amount of pounds on the scale and I'm unworthy to go do these activities or whatever it is. Does that make sense? Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, I relate to all this. Thought of like a, that coming up for you actually made me think of mine. And hopefully those that are listening right now can actually think of theirs where it came from them in, li- in their life. For me, I think my attachment to the scale was, I think, 
at the age when I was able to get a driver's license, so 16, and it had your weight on there. And I, uh, around that age, and I'm a little more high schoolish and stuff, I started kind of working in law enforcement. And so I, we always took IDs as an always thing. And I always just saw, okay, your weight is on like your identification. So it was like part of who you are of just like, you're seeing your face, your name, your weight, your eye color, like it just becomes so much of like a part of you. And I remember like, looking at some girls that I thought were attractive or something, you know, and I'd be like, oh, I wonder what theirs is and see like, you know, I'd be inquisitive to be like, well, how much do you weigh, you know, and find out, okay, like right. they would weigh less. Now I am five, nine, that's a little bit higher as far as tall <laughs> yeah. for a woman. And so I was always <laughs> rating myself compared to women, regardless of how tall they were. I was thinking, okay, you're five, five and you weigh 110 pounds. Okay. That's my goal. <laughs> I know it's, it's crazy. I remember, um, I, I've told you before, but my family's very blunt. And so I remember my grandma and she was like in her nineties and I, she's like, well, how much do you weigh? And I told her and she was like, and I was very fit and you know, I looked great. <laughs> and she was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you weigh that much. And I just was like, <gasps> what? You know? So I think even for my family, it's generational, this attachment to weight, you know? Yes. It's, so, it's huge. And, and now we look at weight and we're like, oh my goodness. So now the bigger picture when I look at weight is now this whole in thing of being curvy and having curves. And it's this like woman thing, you know, there used to be this idea of like how stick thin can you get? So it's like all right. of these like different, whether it's like the eighties to the nineties to like whatever, it's like all these different phases of what a woman's body but how beautiful just a woman's body is as she naturally comes in and just can own her uniqueness rather than what happens is your mom or grandma or parents saying these things to you then create these belief systems. And what have you learned about belief systems so far in the program? They can hold you back. They can make you stuck. <laughs> yeah. And stuck is for sure the loop. And, and so I, I imagine it kind of like this as I see women coming in and they go, okay, my mom or my grandma said this about my shocked that my weight was this much. Right. So before you perceived yourself to be beautiful and to fit and everything was fine. But then all of a sudden that moment we created By questioning exactly. Am I too in that Do moment. I look it was sad. Oh yeah. In that moment, it's like, wait a minute. Oh, uh, apparently that's not, a, that's not good enough. Uh, apparently that's, that's right. overweight. Right. And then we create the belief system of, okay, well, now I'm, now I'm not up to par. So then now we create these labels in our head. Okay. I'm not enough. I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not beautiful. And then it leads to the feelings that that's created. So then it feels terrible, depression, all sorts of like, you know, really terrible, low vibrational feelings, which we've seen led into actions. Right. Uh, it's like a vicious cycle of oh, I'm not good enough. And then you kind of stop working out and you, and you start eating bad. And that just, this goes on and on and on and on and on and on. hundred percent. Yeah. All of a sudden, then we have the emotional eaters or the non-eaters, right? Then yeah. we start letting that affect. Exactly. And then, or if we're so much up in here of self-doubt, then we don't even take that time of value for our workouts. It's just so, it's so interesting. So what is kind of like coming into, I mean, it was quite off the bat as soon as the program started. I mean, we kind of jumped quickly into mindset with you. What was yeah. what was that like going? Like, were you expecting that when you joined the program? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I just felt like it was another like, okay, we're going to go work out. We're going to go lift a hundred pounds today. And you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You're going to sweat. Um, but no, that was really, that. I feel like that's been the key thing that I was missing is someone to really talk through mindset with me. Um, and that's why I've had so like amazing results from the program is because I've reprogrammed my mind about how I feel about the scale. And, you know, something else, my mom, she would always tell me after she had babies and she was quite petite. I think she's only five foot, maybe five one. And she'd be like, I, you know, after my third baby, I weighed a hundred pounds or whatever. And I never weighed a hundred pounds, even, you know, starting out having kids um, even though I looked trim or whatever. And so that was always a hang up like, oh crap, I, you know, my mom weighed a hundred pounds. I needed to weigh this hundred pounds. Um, I don't know. It's, it really screws you up and you don't take into consider consideration how much like muscle weighs or how much my boobs weigh, or, you know, like all of us are just built so differently. Like you're saying you're five, nine, 
it's ridiculous for us to compare ourselves to each other <laughs> you know and the older I get I'm like this is ridiculous why are we doing that yeah and then and then what's interesting is the weight loss industry right I, I mean this this is what blew my mind because I was really stuck in the weight loss I call it the lies for 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 me probably about a, like a good intentional 10 years and like meaning like I intentionally was in it to win it. I'm doing everything. I'm signing up for everything. Yeah. I'm trying it all to the point that then it led to the extremes of it. So then I started just going. So then it would be, I would binge. I would go into, instead of like actually purging, what I would do is take laxative teas to try to think it would push it out of my body. And yeah. did not realize the type of contractions and pain that I was experiencing as a 20 year old, because I was like, well, I'm broken. I can't get to this weight. So I have to like force and push and control this like in insanity on myself. Yeah. And it, it was honestly, it was like, it was a weird kind of process for me that it was like, a year goes by and then another year goes by and another year and you don't really know what you're doing until all of a sudden I had a coworker walk in on me as I was literally shoving like five donuts in my face, like trying to like get them all at the same time and like obsessively like weird. I don't, it was, it was, it was bad. And I remember she looked at me cause I forgot to lock the bathroom door. And I was like, my <laughs> illness is out there in the world. Now somebody knows that, that I'm I in here literally doing this to myself. And it, that was the moment I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, it was my big wake up call. Like, oh, what am I doing? Oh this is, why am I embarrassed? Yeah. Something must be really off. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. I, for I don't know why. I think, I don't know. Like I've told you before, I feel like my daughter kind of gets stuck in this weight thing and she's beautiful I think I've shown you pictures and she's so thin and cut and she'll be like my legs are fat or whatever and I'm like no your legs have muscle on them you know it, it's just nuts for women to to be so attached to the pound on the scale yeah I don't and think I remember you're... even after I had one of my kids sorry Danita um I, I I had gotten down to the weight that I wanted to be and I still looked fat I looked soft and my you know, I just, I told my husband, I'm like, I, even if I've gotten down to this weight, I still don't look how I want to look. It was just this, ah, what do I do now? You know? Yeah. You realize that like fitting into clothes and weight loss actually turns into two different goals. Yeah. It's two different things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it was, it was a, it was quite a journey for me. And I think of, you know, eventually when you just start to feel like you're broken and that things just obviously can't work for you. You must be the the rare. Uh, yeah, know. something's wrong with my body. I can't, you know, maybe I have a slow metabolism or maybe I have whatever it is. Maybe my hormones are so out of whack that I can't lose weight and everyone else around me can or whatever it is. But you do think that you're like, what is going on with me? You know, why can other people lose weight and I can't? Yeah, yeah. even I remember I was 25 and I was like, it's just my age. Yeah. <laughs> or I would be like, well, my body's just so stretched out. I can't, I can never get back to where I was, you know? Yeah. And I definitely think after you have kids, your body still, I mean, you're changed some, you know, but you can still get back. I'm pretty darn close to where I was already just, at, you know, two and a half months into the program. Well, yeah, let's actually tell them. So you're about seven and a half inches lost in your waist. And how long have you actually, you're not even done with the program. So how long have you been here for? <laughs> I don't, I was trying to think, was it like two and a half months, three months? And I've lost 7.2 inches or something around my waist. You guys, this is just like insanity. I remember <laughs> literally when I've been working my ass off for a year, Danita, trying to with a different trainer and I was getting nowhere and I was so frustrated. And I finally just this like last attempt. I'm like, okay, I'm doing booty bands. She seems to know what she's talking about. So I'm just going to trust her. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I'm I got, I got a really frustrated, frantic Whitney at the beginning. And that's how usually yeah. members kind of come in because I, mean, I get it. I've been there. I know what it feels like to, to struggle for 10 years of trying to reach a goal. And at some point you're like, I'm just going to have to just cut this off or surgery or, I mean, you, you kind of just yeah. really start to lose. And I, had goal, done you know? that. I had done a tummy tuck. I had done some of those things and I was still just not happy with where I was. And I'm like, I am working my butt off 
every day with this trainer and I've already done a surgery and I just am getting nowhere. And I, I told you, I kind of like I was drowning, you know, and I was also so attached to my worthiness, my worth and the scale, you know what I mean? They were one and that was really screwing up my life. Do you know what I'm saying? So how do you, my question then, uh, how, how are you actually really not freaking out about the scale? Like what is the new information that you have that some people are like, okay, that's great and all, Whitney, you've lost seven and a half pounds, but somebody still thinks they're might broken. What was the biggest shift of really that scale and what weight loss is for you now? So weight, I mean, I definitely, because I think I've lost, how many pounds was it? 11 pounds, maybe 7.2 inches around my waist. Um, but during the process, you know, at the beginning, I was like still kind of freaking out about the scale and we would have talks. But halfway through the program, it was like, I'm starting to look really good and, and I haven't gone down that much in weight. My body is definitely changing and I still weigh about the same, you know? So then that's why I had to have these conversations with myself. Well, why are you so freaked out about the scale if, you know, your waist has gone down so much and, and I'll be honest, I'm not like perfect in this area. I still have to have these conversations with myself sometimes because I still feel like I'm a little attached to the scale. Um, but having the knowledge that I have now of, you know, like how much more muscle weighs and how you can still shrink your waist and everything and weigh the same amount. It's changed my life. You know, I'm way happier since I'm not stuck to the scale, you know, I, I'm not weighing myself obsessively during the day or whatever, trying to reach my goal. Yeah. And I think, I, honestly, women are so smart. They're so intelligent. And as soon as they hear this information, it starts to really click. And so you guys, let's just start laying out the facts because the weight loss industry is valued at $80 billion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's just put that out there. Also, we should put out there that The Biggest Loser, it was a huge TV show that was shut down by not the celebrity fitness trainer, but by the contestants. It's a fact. Look it up. And the contestants, the reason why they shut it down is because the majority of them gained the weight back. I just going to tell you, my husband's first cousins were on there and they are ballooned back to where they were. And it's because dieting isn't working. It, it's changing your lifestyle and changing what you're doing every single day. It's not this like, boom, like let's stop eating, you know, and that's not going to be a lifelong thing. I mean, can you guys imagine like these people are losing hundreds of pounds and then they gain hundreds of pounds back. Yeah. Like, that's like dead months. You know what I mean? Like right after in a year, they've gained back hundreds of pounds. It's so sad. And so they got together and they they canceled the show. I mean, you guys look at, um, there's issue, there's a lot of, um, uh, legalities and liabilities now with Jenny Craig and they're starting to shut their doors. I don't know if you guys have seen that. So what you're going to start to see here is that people are starting to wake up and that's what it was for me. I got a coach after 10 years of struggle for me is when I woke up and I hired a coach and when he was like, yeah, you're going to be eating five, six times a day. I was like, ho, ho, ho. Oh, what? you're going to make me real <laughs> fat, bro. You're going to make yeah. me real fat. And he goes, and I go, please, like, can I stick to my one to two times a day? And he looked at me and said, nope. And I was like, okay, get ready for fat Danita. Here she comes. Next thing you know, <laughs> I'm standing up on stage winning two trophies for a bikini competition. And I'm like, what just happened? And why isn't this being taught to women? Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the going back to really the facts, you guys. So when we're losing weight, what are we losing? We're losing three things, Whitney. Do you remember what they are? Water, muscle, and fat. Yes. And when we're losing our muscle, what are we losing? Metabolism is freaking out, right? Our metabolism is slowing down because that people, that, that's what the real, realization is. When people say I have a slow metabolism, they just think it's genetics. They think they don't have an ability. Right, I have bad genetics. Yeah, they're like, they don't think they have the ability to speed it up. So when I tell people, I'm like, is it possible to speed your metabolism? They're like, uh, and I'm like, well, do you even know what your metabolism is? And they're like, uh. Yeah, right. I know. Like, I've had crazy, crazy conversations with women that literally think their metabolism is like, they're 
cells and organs. Like they have no idea what's a metabolism. Yeah. So I mean, now- even like, cause we had a discu- discussion, I remember, and you're like, you're going to start feeling more hungry or whatever, because your metabolism's kicking in. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, I'm, now I'm burning things. Oh yeah. That makes sense now. <laughs> oh, but- and I was, <laughs> go ahead. And I, and I was eating more, you know what I mean? Like I'm eating the four to five times a day. And then what's interesting is yeah, after, so it now makes sense after a workout, we start to get hungrier, which that was a big punishment for us. We thought, oh no, hungry. No, right. Suppress our appetite. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Let's hurry up and starve ourselves. So here we are working out. We get hungry. Uh, Oh no, no, no. So what we want to do is we don't want to work out anymore because we know we're getting hungry. (laughs) It's going to make us hungry. Wow, the totally misinformation. Personal. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. I just was noticing that one celebrity had some keto gummy or something, and um, she was advertising that it'll help you lose 60 pounds in a month or whatever. And I'm like, why? And the, the, the sad thing is, is people are jumping on board with that, and she's making millions of dollars off of it. Kim Kardashian came out with an appetite suppressant sucker. Oh yeah, I did hear about that. The intermittent fasting know. world has blown up because and I have tried intermittent fasting and I lost a little bit of weight, um, but I didn't tone up during it. You know what I mean? So I still kind of had the skinny fat, and then as you can't not eat for the rest of your life. So then once you start eating, then you're like gaining it all back, you know, and then you're like depressed more. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. It is. It's a big shift. And so uh, really the goal obviously is fat loss that you started going towards of learning, okay, it's not about weight loss. I got to, I got to really get that number out of my head as much as, as much as we are attached to it, we just naturally have to say, you know what, it's just not the way because we don't know what weight we are losing. And so it's not until we're really looking at that fat versus the muscle percentage to really see, but the other, I mean, we call this the trifecta. So there's the nutrition, there's the workouts, and the mindset. So as far as mindset for you, what would you say for people? Why do you think that's such a big component to help you have reached your goals so far? I think if you're like, I don't know, for me, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty wound person. And so if I'm wound up over the scale, the number on the scale, then I'm trying to be obsessive still over things. I'm living in this extreme, like we've talked about. And if I'm living in an extreme, then if I'm not losing that half pound or pound or whatever I have said in my head to ha- that I need to lose to look good, to be worthy, if I'm not losing that every week, then why try anymore? You know, so then the next week you're like spiraling out of control, eating five donuts in the bathroom or whatever. <laughs> so it's important that you're leveled out in your mind so you can be consistent Yeah, we can do all the workouts, we can do all the nutrition correct, but if we're having a stressful day and then we go emotionally eat, how much are we really moving forward? Well, and even the stress is affecting your sleep, right? And then you're screwing up your cortisol and all that that's making you gain weight. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can be even kill um, in a plant, you know, in a workout plan and stuff, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I just got off a call. It was very, it was very interesting. She's, she's almost in her sixties and she just initially came to the call and like that frantic energy. I said that you you initially came to the call of like, (laughs) I'm going to go crazy. Help me. I was like, all right, all right, all right. We got this. We got this. Right. And so I I initially kind of just let it out because there's so much emotions that us women can carry. And if we have been suppressing it for so long, it really, it really needs to come up. And so as soon as it comes up, then we start to kind of reflect, okay, on what are our deep belief systems? And so we go back to your daughter for a second, right? And if she's over there, like so fit and so whatever, we have no idea what people are saying to her at school. She's also part of dance, just like you were, right? And so what we have to do, even as parents now is start to really create that ripple effect down as we work on ourselves first, because you couldn't just magically just go fix her if you're over here feeling like you can't fix yourself. So we have to really do this. And so the art of you making yourself a priority and showing up for yourself, investing in yourself so that this can be a a ripple effect. Do you think that that actually can create a ripple effect into your daughter's life? 
Oh, definitely. I've seen, um, oh, it's gonna make me emotional. I've seen a ripple effect, like even in my own, like my siblings and my friends, you know, they're like, what are you doing? That's changing your body and changing your, you know, I was stressed out of my brain for a long time. What are you doing? And I'm, uh, I'm spreading, you know, you've got to look at booty bands, you've got to get the app and I'll help him download it right then and there. Cause I, it's such good information and, you know, but for my family, especially like I have my girls going down with me and I'm not even inviting them down because sometimes they're super annoying when I work out, but they're still going down there with me and they're, they're getting the bands, they're working out and they're learning about weights and stuff. And we kind of talk about it. So even though I'm not like pressuring at them on them, they're learning, you know, at their own pace when they want to come down and be with me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we see even like really, really young kids, even like two years old, will go pick up like, you know, a foam barbell with their mom. And like, they just want to be there. They want to see what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you're In a weird way, as like as a teenager, you know, it's kind of like they kind of look out the side of their eye. You don't really know they're watching, but like, of course they are. They're running down there and they're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, yeah. you, can, yeah. you can kind of see it as a parent, like they're inquisitive. And, and like sometimes she's a little like, well, why didn't you even tell me that you were going to go work out? I'm like, well, I didn't know that you wanted to know. <laughs> so she's wanting to be a part of that now that's awesome that's really cool and really as a parent it's I feel like it's your role to teach them good health things for long term you know what I mean mm -hmm. especially because I mean we weren't we weren't given that you know and I know that's why I mean can you imagine if we did huh. Like, where would we be now if we, if we didn't have to go through the, the weight scale journey and the weight loss journey and the appetite suppressant pills and all the misinformation, yeah. like, where would we be? We only want the best for our children, right? Like, why not set them up for success immediately with the right information? Right. It's a long-term skill that they need to have. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's just, I, I want to say, Whitney, it's just, I might get emotional. Oh, okay. <laughs> like you're members like you is why I do this. And I just want to say thank you so much for just being such an amazing person and example. And the ripple effect that you're doing is just an honor to be a part of and to witness. And I, I love all of our calls every single week with each other to be able to grow and continue in that trifecta of all those different parts so that, so that your business even gets better. So the relationship gets better. So like you grow up and you look back at your kids and you're just like, yes, yes, you're doing it, you know, and just, oh my God. Yeah. All of what that. I feel like, I'm like, I have spent so much time of my life, like when I could have spent it with my kids and I've been sitting here worrying about my weight and what I look like and it's taken away from things, you know? So I feel like when I found booty bands, it kind of like saved me, if that makes sense, you know, it's what I definitely needed. And I wish more women, um, and I hope women see this and understand the importance of doing this program instead of trying all these fad diets and pills and everything, because it's not going to work. I know for a certainty, it's not going to work. I've even tried extreme stuff like um, Anavar, you know, steroids and different things in it, it just screwed me up more. Mm -hmm. That stuff doesn't work. Yeah. So if somebody's listening right now and they're like, oh man, yeah. Um, latest celebrities coming out with, uh, gummies and they're proven that they're going to help me lose 60 pounds in two weeks. You know, what is something I right. guess just for somebody just to hear it from somebody that, I mean, you're not getting paid for this, you know, you're, you're here for just totally raw inspiration to other women if they're listening right now and they get to really just kind of take the vulnerable, raw, authentic version of you right now, what would you say to them? I would just say those things aren't going to work and stop putting so much emphasis on the scale. Like you can still, you still have worth. You still are important to all the people around you. And instead of thinking that you need to lose all this weight in two weeks or one week or whatever it is, so that all of a sudden you can have this worth or whatever, let your body give your, give yourself some time to lose that weight and to not be in a fad diet, but actually just this lifestyle change and don't be so hard on yourself. You know, it, 
I think that's another thing that women do is we're just so dang hard on ourselves, like this perfection of how we look. And you see all these women in magazines and they're airbrushed and they, you know, had all this work done and everything. And we compare ourselves ourselves to them, you know, and that can screw up your brain. <laughs> I, I don't know, Danita, there's so much to talk about on that topic, but the, what I would say to them is stop trying to do a fad diet, allow yourself to feel worth right now and stick to a program and be happy during that journey. You know? Mm -hmm. No, I felt that. I felt that truly from the heart. And thank you so much for that. Cause that, that can help take a woman sitting right now in her living room and she is just given up on herself. She's been a victim to the scale for who knows, 40 years probably. Right. And is just completely feeling hopeless. Like she's broken. You and I've been there. We know what that feels like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we're here. And, and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. You know, I, that's, it's a miserable thing to live through and to feel so hopeless but you don't need to, you can do, you know, these simple little workouts and this simple change in your eating and you're going to feel a thousand times better. And it's going to fill each one of your areas, education, spiritual, and, and physical, you know, they all intertwine. Going back to it. Look at you. You're, <laughs> you are a natural speaker. Look at you. Wow. That you're right. You're absolutely right. And you know, I, I, what I see commonly is it's like, it's one thing that can just really kind of throw that out of the bus, you know? And so that's why it has to be simple. That's why it has to just kind of get it, get it going, get that wheel moving. And I love that you mentioned the worth part truly, because that's, I think really where it starts. People want to be fit to then feel worthy or beautiful or enough or whatever, reality, or a good enough mom or whatever the bogus thing is that you've created in your mind, you know, when really it's like, you have to get that place. Now you have to be worthy of enough to know that you can invest in yourself, show up for yourself. And it's a hard, and that's, that's what we'll teach you here at booty bands and barbells, because that's the emotional piece that will fast track. We've heard 10 to 20 years of therapy. I've heard that multiple mouths have said that to me that they have done so many years of therapy and nothing has hit them to truth like this has. And what's beautiful is I'm not the one that tells you, you tell me what your truth is. And in that alignment is where we let go of those extremes. And that's where, you know, like you hear like, okay, when I have that, then I'll be happy. Well, you guys, it's the opposite. Truly. It's when you, you gotta be that, happy now, then you'll have it. Yeah. Then you become the magnetic drawing to you of those things. And that is you guys, a total success solution for your business, for being a great mom, for being an awesome relation, for getting your workouts. Like you have to start so much. And it's, it's difficult because I agree with you. You can't look in the mirror and bullshit your way to thinking that you're worthy. And so that's why we do a, um, it's a, it's a hundred percent a proven solution. That's three steps. That's gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna prove to me that you're worthy. Because I know you already are. You sitting there over there on your couch. I know that you're worthy. Yeah. Well, and I just can't emphasize enough. I, I was seriously so attached to my weight on the scale and my worthiness. And maybe that isn't like that for everyone. But for me, it seriously was. And I really had to change the way I think to feel worthy. I don't, I don't know. It was crazy. Does that make sense? It's it just, does. So what does it feel now? So attached to that. So now that you don't have that attachment, what does that feel like on the other side? Like a burden's been lifted off of me. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not like eating something like, oh my gosh, is this going to make me go up a half a pound today? Or, you know, I had more asparagus than yesterday. Is that going to make me not reach my goal of whatever I've set up in my head? Yeah. Oh. What a breakthrough, man. I what a breakthrough. I feel it. And Whitney, I just want to say thank you for your time today. This is time out of your day, time away from your family that you did this to show up and inspire somebody. And I promise you, it creates a massive ripple effect. So know that you showing up is creating that into the world. Yeah. So thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Thanks for signing up. Thanks for trusting in me. Oh, Thanks I'm for letting so me be your coach. 
not at all you other coaches out there. You don't get her. She's mine. I get her. <laughs> well, when I signed up, I'm like, listen, I'm having, Anita. that's it. That's, that's the coach I'm having. <laughs> Yeah, I got that message. I was like, all right, she's mine. Bring her bring her on in. I'll if she really wants me, I'm the hard coach. So she's gonna she's gonna have to get a real quick transformation with me. So and I think all of the coaches are amazing. So yeah, well, the reality is is I'm actually in all of them. So the secret is is I actually am dripped through every single one of those. So they're everyone gets me. So the secret is you need it. <laughs> All right, well, lots of love. Thank you so much for jumping on tonight. Send your family some love. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Vance Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. Have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.